how are you hope you all are doing well and welcome to my youtube channel today i'll be discussing about post translational modification of collagen it's a very very important topic and at the same time it's a very typical process where there are multiple steps both intracellularly as well as extracellularly so i'll be explaining you how the collagen which is a glycoprotein is modified post translationally so my focus in this video will be post translational modification of this glycoprotein which is having carbohydrate residues attached to it that is why it is glycoprotein so to start with let me tell you the collagen is produced on rough endoplasmic reticulum of the cell on the polyribosomes these are ribosomes and when i talk to you about collagen synthesis the collagen polypeptide is synthesized on these studded ribosomes and its end terminal is going to go to endoplasmic reticulum lumen so first of all you should know the collagen is synthesized as pre pro collagen and uh, this is brought inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen because the, if you talk about this pre pro collagen the end terminal is having a specific leader or signal sequence which is responsible for entry of pre pro collagen into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen so when we are talking about pre pro collagen we have end terminal leader or leader or signal sequence and also we have kind of extension peptide on either side of it it's called end terminal extension peptide and it's called c terminal extension peptide so in this fashion the pre pro collagen is entering the rough endoplasmic reticulum and as this collagen pre pro collagen enters the rough endoplasmic reticulum with certain enzymes this leader sequence is removed once the leader sequence is removed it is converted to pro collagen so you should know the sequence of modification the pre pro collagen after removal the signal after removal of signal or leader sequence it's converted to pro collagen and this pro collagen which is still there in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen is seen like this this is n terminal this is c terminal this having extension peptide on either side of it as i have just now told you and these extension peptides are having rich amount of cysteine residues cysteine residues on both the ends it's a cysteine residues just sulfur containing amino acid is richly found in this extension peptide now what next happens after removal of leader or signal sequence that there occurs modification of this collagen polypeptide which is called pro collagen and that modification is there are two types of modification one is the hydroxylation another is the glycosylation so hydroxylation as well as the glycosylation both are taking place in the er lumen itself the hydroxylation of proline and lysine residues respectively by prolyl hydroxylase and lysyl hydroxylase which demands copper oxygen and vitamin c so we have prolyl hydroxylase lysyl hydroxylase which converts some of the proline some of the lysine to hydroxy proline and hydroxy lysine respectively and then we have glycosylation of this pro collagen and uh, we have glucose and galactose residues which are being transferred on hydroxylysine residues right by enzyme called galactosyl transferase and glucosyl transferase enzyme so we have these modifications taking place in the er lumen itself where pro collagen is undergoing hydroxylation first and once it is hydroxylated and we get the hydroxyproline and hydroxylysine some of the hydroxylysine then is getting modified by glycosylation with the help of enzyme glucosyl transferase and galactosyl transferase and where this all process is taking place as i have told you in the er lumen itself now once this modification has taken place what happens what happens that three residue three pro collagens they come together 
and they make this kind of assembly this is n terminal of them c terminal of them this kind of assembly is there for three procollagens and this is favored due to interchain and intrachain disulfide linkages where will uh, this disulfide linkages will be seen between the cysteine residues when we talk about n terminal cysteine residues it is going to have this disulfide linkage intrachain alone but when we talk about c terminal end we have intrachain as well as interchain disulfide linkages which are going to make this triple helix kind of a structure of the procollagen triple helix type of structure this procollagen is still called procollagen so now what you have seen all these processes are occurring place where in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen so the collagen pre procollagen which is come to the er lumen is undergoing so many modification i repeat first of all the leader or signal sequence is removed then there occurs hydroxylation followed by glycosylation of specific residues then three uh, procollagen they come together and they make interchain as well as intrachain disulfide li linkages which are you know assembling them in the triple helical pattern so once this kind of triple helix is formed they are being donated to golgi apparatus suppose this is golgi apparatus in the cell the triple uh, helix collagen is like uh, sent to the golgi apparatus in this fashion and still they are having the interchain and intrachain disulfide linkages in them and these golgi apparatus with the help of certain vesicles they you know they send the triple helix structure to the vesicles and these vesicles are going to fuse with the membrane and these membranes are going to secrete these triple helix outside like this still we have intra and interchain disulfide linkages like this at n terminal as i have told you i repeat there is only intra chain and at c terminal there is intra chain as well as inter chain disulfide linkages now once the triple helix is there in the extracellular space you see the complexity of the whole process of collagen post translational modification it's not a single or step process it's like um, involving both intracellular locations as well as the extracellular locations now this pro collagen which we have received in the triple helical fashion in the extracellular space this kind of a structure is acted upon by peptidases on either of its end we have n terminal uh, peptidase we have c terminal peptidase right n terminal amino peptidase and c terminal carboxy peptidase we have peptidases which will cleave the you know the portion at n terminal and c terminal the portion of extension peptide which are having the interaction of this cysteine residues those portions of extension peptide are cleaved out very neatly in extracellular space and we are left with this kind of triple helix without extension peptide and this is called tropocollagen a number of tropocollagens they come together like this in a staggered arrangement they are arranged to in the extracellular space staggering you should know the staggering a staggered fashion number of tropocollagen fibrils are arranged and this kind of staggered arrangement is like favored by favored by the interaction between these tropocollagens in this fashion which we call it as aldol condensation and shifts base linkages so aldol condensation and shifts base condensation shifts base linkages are the force behind this kind of staggered arrangement of the collagen uh, fibril which is giving the tensile strength to the collagen and this aldol condensation need a uh, enzyme called lysin oxidase enzyme as the name implies this enzyme is going to oxidize lysin residue 
to aldehyde lysine residue. So lysine oxidase is going to oxidize lysine to aldehyde lysine residue and uh, lysine is not only the substrate not uh, only substrate for lysine oxidase we also have hydroxy lysine which is like acted upon by the same enzyme lysine oxidase and that is respectively converted to hydroxy l lysine so we have this kind of modification of certain lysine and hydroxy lysine residue in the extracellular space by enzyme known as lysyl oxidase so very important enzyme it's a copper containing enzyme and this kind of modification of lysine and hydroxy lysine is very very important for this aldol condensation the lysine residues here and its uh, aldehyde counterpart here the hydroxy lysine here and its aldehyde counterpart is actually going to interact to uh, give you this kind of aldol condensation which is going to stabilize this fibrillar arrangement that is why we say in deficiency of copper this aldol condensation is going to get badly affected and collagen will be very fragile child because this aldol condensation will not be taking place in lack of copper like in minky disease in malabsorption when the copper is not sufficiently found in malnutrition we don't have amount or exact exact amount of copper in our body so that case this aldol condensation is badly affected that's going to affect the collagen formation so this in nutshell i have told you how the collagen is modified and how the nomenclatures are being changed from one to another is starting with pre pro collagen or we have the i'm just revising it in another two minutes we have the pre pro collagen which is going to enter the rough endoplasmic reticulum lumen because of its leader or signal peptide and once in the lumen the signal peptide or the leader sequence is removed neatly and then we talk about the extension peptides which are there on the either side and and c terminal then we talk about you see the hydroxylation and the glycosylation which is taking place in the er lumen and i said that prolyl and lysyl residues are undergoing hydroxylation but not all of them some of them they undergo this kind of hydroxylation by prolyl hydroxylase and lysyl hydroxylase respectively and this is followed by glycosylation of which residue this is often asked in mcqs type of question the hydroxylysin is undergoing the modification that's called glycosylation by either glucose or galactose residue catalyzed by glucosyl and galactosyl transferase enzyme all these processes are happening in the er lumen now once this modification is taking place next comes the number of triple helical arrangement where three alpha chain this is called alpha chain right so three alpha chain are twisted in a you know right handed fashion to give you this kind of triple helical structure and this triple helical structure is stabilized by disulfide linkages at c terminal as well as at n terminal and i have told you at n terminal it is only intra chain and at c terminal it is both inter chain and intra chain this kind of uh, pro collagen triple helical pro collagen is handed over to the golgi apparatus for its further processing and in the golgi apparatus when it comes like it is then given to vesicles which are going to fuse with membrane and these vesicles are going to secrete the pro collagen in the intact fashion the triple helical fashion in the extracellular matrix and extracellular matrix is like waiting for this uh, you know uh, pro collagen which is triple helix and there are peptidases which are actually waiting for it and we have n terminal peptidase and c terminal peptidase which are going to cleave the extension peptides giving you very neat triple helical structure which is called tropocollagen and number of tropocollagens are arranged in staggered arrangement which are stabilized by aldol condensation right and these aldol condensations are because of hydroxy lysine and hydroxy l lysine lysine and hydro l lysine residues i said you need to have lysyl oxidase enzyme which is going to modify certain lysine and hydroxy lysine to aldehyde lysine and hydroxy l lysine and this aldol condensation is there between one lysine and its counterpart aldehyde lysine and hydroxy lysine and its counterpart hydroxy l lysine and this lysyl oxidase needs copper and that is why we need the copper for stable collagen 
formation right so the collagen is a glycoprotein collagen is a fibrous protein and it's very very important for making of many of the connective tissues and um, you know so blood vessels formation bone formation we need to have this collagen if any error is there in this formation of the collagen or processing of collagen we have collagenopathies which i discuss you in the next video so uh, for further uh, detail on collagen biosynthesis and its modification you can refer my book concept in biochemistry with clinical approach thank you very much and for more such videos you can subscribe my channel and uh, press the bell icon like you like and share and uh, put in the comment box what other videos will be uh, you wanting me to teach thank you very much